Our objective for this lesson is to determine x and y intercepts, zeros, and asymptotes of logarithmic functions. Please take time to watch Properties of Logarithms and Loss on Logarithms video to fully comprehend today's lesson. Let us start first with intercepts of logarithmic function. Intercepts are points of intersection of the graph to the axis. The first one is the x-intercept. It is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. X-intercept is also called root, solution, or zero of a function. It can easily be solved by setting y equal to zero. The next one is the y-intercept. It is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. It can be solved by setting x equal to zero. Let us have the first example. y is equal to the logarithm of x to the base 2. Let's start with the x-intercept. Let me copy the given, but let me switch their places. So the logarithm of x to the base 2 is equal to y. First step, set y equal to 0. So I will replace y with 0. Second step, solve for x. To solve for x, I'm going to convert this into exponential form. So from the base, raised to 0 equals x. Now, to raise to 0, any number except 0, raised to 0 is equal to 1. So, 1 is equal to x. Your x is 1, your y is 0, therefore your x-intercept is 1, 0. 1 here is also called the zero of a function because this is the value of x when you set your function equal to 0. Next is the y-intercept. So, let us copy the function. First step set x be equal to 0. So I'll replace x here with 0. Next, solve for y. Remember that in logarithms, the value of your argument should be greater than 0, but this is equal to 0. Therefore, our logarithm is not defined. Hence, we do not have y-intercept. Second example, so let's start with the x-intercept. Again, let me copy the function, but I'll switch their places. First step, let y be equal to 0. So I'll replace y here with 0. Second step, solve for x. To solve for x, I'm going to move 5 to the other side. And then I'm going to convert this into exponential form. So 2 raised to negative 5 is equal to x. And then I'm going to make this negative exponent be positive. So I'm going to bring the whole expression down. So 1 over 2 to the fifth is equal to x, and 2 to the fifth is 32. So 1 over 32 is equal to x. My x is 1 over 32, my y is 0, therefore the x-intercept is 1 over 32, 0. Next, y-intercept. So let me copy the function. First step, let x be equal to 0. So I'll replace x here with 0. Next, solve for y. Once again, our argument should be greater than 0. Therefore, our logarithm is not defined. So, we do not have y-intercept. Third example, y is equal to the logarithm of quantity x minus 2 to the base 2 minus 4. So, let's start with the x-intercept. Again, I'll copy the function, but I'll switch their places. First step, let y be equal to 0. So I'll replace this with 0. Next, solve for x. To solve for x, I'll move negative 4 to the other side. And then I'll convert this into exponential form. So 2 raised to 4 is equal to x minus 2. 2 raised to 4 is 16. So 16 is equal to x minus 2. Since I'm solving for x, I'm going to move negative 2 on this side. So 16 plus 2 is equal to x. 16 plus 2 is 18. x is 18, y is 0. Therefore, the x-intercept is 18, 0. This means that my graph will cross the x-axis at 18, 0. And 18 also is the 0 of the function. Next, y-intercept. So let me copy the function. And then let x be equal to 0. Then solve for y. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Once again, 
our argument should be greater than 0, but this is a negative number, so our logarithm is not defined. Therefore, we do not have y-intercept. This means our graph will not cross the y-axis. Next example, y is equal to the logarithm of quantity x plus 4 to the base 2 minus 1. So again, x-intercept first. I'll copy the function, but I'll switch their places. First step, let y be equal to 0. So I'll replace y with 0. Next, solve for x. To solve for x, I'll move negative 1 on the other side. And then I'll convert this into exponential form. So 2 raised to 1 is equal to x plus 4. 2 raised to 1 is 2. To solve for x, I'll move 4 on this side. It will become negative. So 2 minus 4 is equal to x. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. x is negative 2. y is 0. Therefore, the x-intercept is negative 2, 0. This means the graph will cross the x-axis at point negative 2, 0. And also, negative 2 is the 0 of the function. Next, y-intercept. I'll copy the function and then let x be equal to 0 and then solve for y. 0 plus 4 is 4. I'll express 4 as 2 squared. In this manner, my x and b are the same. Property of logarithm, when your x and b are the same, the answer to this expression is the exponent of your x. So this expression is equal to 2. So y is equal to 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. x is 0, y is 1. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, 1. This means the graph will cross the y-axis at point 0, 1. Number 5, y is equal to the negative logarithm of quantity x minus 2 to the base 1 half plus 4. So let's start with the x-intercept. First, I'm going to move this expression to the other side. It will become positive. So let y be equal to 0. I'll replace y here with 0. And then solve for x. Allow me to simplify this first. I'll remove plus 0 here. I'll convert this into exponential form. So 1 half raised to 4 is equal to x minus 2. 1 raised to 4 is 1. 2 raised to 4 is 16. So I have 1 over 16 is equal to x minus 2. To solve for x, I'll move negative 2 on the other side. It will become positive. So 1 over 16 plus 2 is equal to x. And then I'll express 2 into a fraction wherein the denominator is also 16 to make them similar fractions. To do that, I'll just have to multiply 16 and 2. 16 times 2 is 32, so 2 is equal to 32 over 16. To check, 32 over 16 is 2. Now that they are similar fractions, I can simply add the numerators. 1 plus 32 is 33. Copy 16. X is 33 over 16. Y is 0. Therefore, the x-intercept is 33 over 16, 0. This means the graph will pass through the x-axis at point 33 over 16, 0. And also, 33 over 16 is the 0 of the function. Next, the y-intercept. Let me copy the function. So, let x be equal to 0. I'll replace x here with 0. Then, solve for y. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Again, the argument should be greater than 0. Since this is a negative number, then our logarithm is not defined. Therefore, we do not have y-intercept. It means our graph will not pass through the y-axis. Let us have one more. y is equal to the logarithm of logarithm of quantity 3x minus 2. So I'll copy the function, but I'll switch their places. So let y be equal to 0. I'll replace this with 0. 
and then solve for x. So to solve for x, I'll convert this into exponential form. This is a common logarithm, so the base here is 10. So 10 raised to 0 is equal to the logarithm of 3x minus 2. 10 raised to 0 is 1. Then I'll convert this again into exponential form. Again, my base here is 10 because this is a common logarithm. So 10 raised to 1 is equal to 3x minus 2. 10 raised to 1 is 10 and then I'll move negative 2 on this side. It will become positive. So 10 plus 2 is equal to 3x. 10 plus 2 is 12. Dividing both sides by 3, 3 and 3 will be cancelled out. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 4 is equal to x. x is equal to 4. y is equal to 0. Therefore, the x-intercept is 4, 0. It means the graph of this function will cross the x-axis at point 4, 0. And also, 4 is the 0 of the function. For the y-intercept, I'll copy the function. Let x be equal to 0, so I'll replace this with 0. And then solve for y. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So, negative 2, that is less than 0. Therefore, our logarithm is not defined. So, we do not have y intercept. This time, let us have asymptotes. These are dashed lines to which a graph gets closer and closer as the x or y increases or decreases its value without bound. They serve as boundary lines in which the graph of the function approaches. There are three kinds of asymptotes. Vertical, horizontal, and slant or oblique. However, logarithmic functions only have vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote of logarithmic function graphed as vertical dashed line. It is the value of x as the graph approaches towards positive or negative infinity. To solve for the vertical asymptote, equate the argument equal to 0 and solve for the value of x. Let's have the first example. So our argument here is x, so x is equal to 0. Therefore, that is our vertical asymptote. x is equal to 0. Another example. Our argument here is x minus 1, so let us equate that to 0. To solve for x, let us move negative 1 on the other side. Therefore, the vertical asymptote is x equals 1. Another one, our argument here is x plus 2, so x plus 2 equals 0, moving 2 to the other side, x equals negative 2. So vertical asymptote is x equals negative 2. One more, so our argument here is 2x minus 5, let us equate that to 0. Let us move negative 5 on the other side. Let us divide both sides by 2. So 2 and 2 will be cancelled out. So x is equal to 5 over 2. Therefore, our vertical asymptote is x equals 5 over 2. This is the summary of what we have discussed. Finding the 0 is the same as finding the x-intercept. To solve for the x-intercept, set y equal to 0 and solve for x. To solve for the y-intercept, set x equal to 0 and solve for y. To find the vertical asymptote, equate the argument equal to 0 and then solve for the value of x. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. <laughs> Let us answer letter A, 0 of a function. So all you have to do is to equate the function equal to 0. So let us move negative 5 on the other side and then let us convert this into exponential form. So 2 raised to 5 is equal to x plus 8. 2 raised to 5 is 32. And then moving 8 to the other side, it becomes minus 8. 32 minus 8 is 24. Therefore, we have 0 of the function is 24. Next, 
x-intercept is the same as the zero of the function, so 24 and then your y is zero, so therefore x-intercept is 24, zero. Y-intercept, so let x be equal to zero, so this will just be equal to the logarithm of a to the base 2 minus 5. I'll express 8 as 2 cubed. So, base and x are the same. Therefore, the answer to this expression is 3. So, y is equal to 3 minus 5. And that is negative 2. x is 0. y is negative 2. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Last one, the vertical asymptote. Our argument is x plus 8. Equate that to 0. Move 8 to the other side. Vertical asymptote is x equals negative 8. Gets 